Okay, so hey guys, and welcome back to another weekly fighting roundup. And in t of course, in today's video, we've got boxing and MMA news. If you are new around here though and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like video if you do need like video, and let's get straight into it. So, going into this one, of course, starting off with the boxing news. So, Linares has retired from boxing. That is a shame to see an absolute legend of the sport retiring, but uh, it's understandable. But credit to him. What he went for out on his shield, just got outboxed and got outclassed against Catero, and he seems to have admitted that and is not just going to have crap fights for necessary reasons. He's gone out against a great fighter and then gone and retired, which is completely fair play to him, and you got to respect that. Jarvis is set to fight B Dave November 17th. Another prime card is being set to be made for next year. Fury will fight November 10th. Hearn says Joshua may fight Caballero, Hergovic or Wallen in December. WBO won't order McCaskill versus Ryan too, which I think is really bad. Like, it was a really, really close fight. And, well, I would say it wasn't really, to be fair. I think Ryan won the fight and really should have gotten the decision. And so normally they do automatically order it again. So I'm surprised that they haven't. And... I really hope that they do rematch it because, like I said, I feel like Ryan is deserving of the victory and hopefully it's not another one of these cases where it just never happens again because McCaskill's now too scared to do it or just doesn't want to do it and goes on to then retire because I don't think she's got that many fights left herself. Willem Smith will fight Masternak December 10th. Eubank Jr. has asked the WBO not to order him as a mandatory challenger. Seems like he's probably just more focused on the Ben fight at the moment. Inoue will fight to Paez December 26th. That's going to be a great Boxing Day fight. Can't wait for that one. I uh, just love watching Inoue every time he fights. And so I'm eagerly anticipating this fight where he's going to aim to become, I believe, undisputed champion again in another weight division. Uh, and from the way that things are going, he's following his plan where he's going to defend this one. Well, he's going to go for undisputed. Then he wants to defend it against one of the top challengers in the division. Then he wants to move up. And at the moment, he seems like he's one of the only boxers that are following a plan that he is putting out and that he is saying. And credit to him and having more and more big fights. Wilder has called out Joshua. Smith will fight December 1st. McCann is now being trained by Goosen. Moorcroft will fight Rennie December 1st. McCormack vs Dobson is off. Masood will fight Sam Martin November 11th. Uh, first of all, I forgot to say, good to see Rennie in a big fight on a big card against Moorcroft and uh, Masood getting back to full health and uh, heading out, headlining this event now, which is nice to see. I wasn't sure where in the where that fight would kind of slot into any of the upcoming Miss, uh, not Misfits matchroom shows, uh, but good that he's managed to find a slot for him. Garcia won't fight Mayweather December 9th. Canelo is set to fight Munguia in May if Munguia beats Ryder in January. Then Canelo wants to fight Benavides in September if Benavides beats Android in December. and then, But it doesn't really work, Canelo saying all this. Like I said, it's not many fighters are really following this set plan at the moment. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Canelo fights to Munguia. That Munguia bit is more likely against Benavides in September. I don't know how much I'm going to believe in that because, I mean, first of all, Benavides has to beat Android. And then he'll probably gonna to want to fight again, and then he, I would probably will then would go on to fight him. But he's just planning way too far ahead, and I, I, I think the Munguia thing is is likely to happen. Uh, so he probably won't see Canelo in pot until possibly May now. Bridges has partnered with Forged Irish Stout. Gonzalez vs Zapata was cancelled. Uh, Gonzalez getting, I believe, ill again, which is sad to see, as I did prediction for that one and. He's just coming back off the illness, and so to see him go back to being ill again and being have to pull out again, uh, and have even more out time at the ring, is going to question how many more fights he even got left in him when that is happening and recurring. Catterall was set to fight in February. Colkill has retired. Uh, realistically, good to see him. First of all, just in good health, and fair enough that he's retired. Uh, everything that happened with him after the Hopi Price fight with him going to the. Uh, being knocked out I believe and well having a kind of brain thing and everything like that it's good to see that he's retired you gotta 
you got to really when it's getting to that point and things like that happening because it's just a scare to your family and it's understandable that he has retired and fair enough to him. Towood will fight December 1st. Edwards will fight Foster November 18th. Williams has joined Happy Punch. Davis has been suspended for 90 days. That's quite a big bit of news. Keyshawn Davis, a good up-and-coming talent. Not too sure why, though, uh, that he has been suspended, but 90 days out of the ring for him now. Masvidal is set to fight early 2024 in boxing. Ben may fight Eubank Jr. in January. Birchill will fight December 1st. Ryan versus... Uh, no, Ryan and Mitchell have partnered uh, parted ways. Signs or Sainz has partnered with Forged Irish Stout. Briggs is set to fight Jackson February 17th. Maloney will fight Flores December 9th. Wardley may fight Parker. Warren has said Fury will fight U6 in January or February. Barrett will fight November 25th. Rakimov is set to fight Nunes. Rosado Ortiz won via unanimous decision versus Pap. Van Hooter won via unanimous decision versus Ghana. Aguiar won via points versus Vega. Soderno won, uh, no, Drew versus De- Pestri. Chavez won via unanimous decision versus Jean Janin. Lascale won via K in round 9 versus Barlow. Vargas won via unanimous decision versus Marquez. Serrano won via unanimous decision versus Ramos to remain IBF, IBO, WA, and WEO World Featherweight Champion. Uh, good to see that kind of history making fight still go ahead and still happen even with the WC pulling out and everything like that uh, but as a fight in general Serrano yet again putting on a dominance of display fair play to Ramos she's very tough I'm surprised how these fighters are managing to stay in with Serrano the way that she does fight it's very much high pressure high volume and the fact it was going for 12 12 frees as well fair play to the, Ramos again and Ramos, I mean, Serrano is still putting on that relentless pressure and obviously there's things that she could do to improve to make it more likely for her to be able to get stoppages like cutting off the ring a bit more and not over committing and maybe following up on his uh, punches a bit more than just going one punch at a time or just being a little bit cleaner with her shots but just her relentless pressure and her constant walking down and walking forwards is credit to her to be able to do that throughout the whole fight and really is difficult for any fighter to be able to beat that and that's why she's been such a dominant and good champion uh etorma won via k uh, tk around one versus bernouf mccann won via tk around two versus duran congratulations to mccann uh, i don't think he's been getting the credit he deserves uh winning that fight and winning it on such a big card and we had him on the channel a while ago now uh but credit to him good great to see him doing great things Makmudov won via TK around one versus right to become North American Boxing Federation and to be a intercontinental heavyweight champion. Bacoli won via TK around four versus Takam. Parker won via K in round three versus Keane to become IBF intercontinental and to WBO intercontinental heavyweight champion. Wardley won via TK around seven versus Adelaide to become British Commonwealth and WBO European heavyweight champion. Fury won via split decision versus Ngannou to become WBC Riyadh season champion. Uh, speak a bit more about the card uh, Torma dominant display good to see him get an early stoppage I didn't think he'd do that to be honest of course what I said about McCann uh, McMoodov another very good dominant display early stoppage again just has to be de- moving up the ranks very quickly now uh, Bacoli uh, surprisingly good performance I don't think he would do that well against somebody as well seasoned as what Takam is uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if Takam Possibly maybe has one or two more fights left, but if he wouldn't surprise me if he retires. Uh, Parker, he's come and proved a point there in that fight. It was a good fight from him and a good performance from him and a necessary stoppage. His last fight was a stoppage, but it was more of a questionable one against a lesser opponent. But Keane is a creditable opponent to an extent, and it's showed that he's not quite as much on the slide as maybe what people thought. And uh, so credit to him. Wardley. I said he'd be able to get the, the stoppage against Adelaide and I got it bang on. He is, in my opinion, the better fighter and the one which is going to have the more heart and going to hit better and land more and in a war is going to be the one that comes out on top and that was the case. Adelaide, I don't really like the way that he kind of took it. He didn't really seem to be as humble in defeat as what certain fighters can be, but emotions were running high, fair enough to him. Uh, will I mean, I'm sure Queensby will try building back up again. I don't know if he actually has it in him 
so watching that fight to be able to ever get to a top top world championship level but of course you never know you can really never write off how this win might affect him i mean this defeat might affect affect him uh, but wardley going on to more big fights hopefully now and probably will try get the fraser clark fight next uh, if that doesn't end up happening again then like i said the park one is an option and that could be a good fight people saying that might be a bit too soon uh, but that could be a good fight as well and then of course the main event fury and garnu um my opinions on it questionable scorecards yet again from boxing it's another one of these things i wouldn't say it again it's a robbery it's very rare that you'll see me use that term as i said in reaction to the ksi fury fight it's very rare that i will use the term robbery because it was a very close fight this one i would say this was probably even more of a close fight compared to that of fury ksi um but and garnu did very well and very impressed with his performance coming in being able to get the knockdown especially fair play to him he definitely had success in rounds as well i think fury had certain successes in other rounds it was quite a cagey fight not really too much was really getting shown fury outboxed him to an extent in a couple rounds and kept his range a little bit but Ngannou with everything that was coming towards him was responding every time as well and like I said in my prediction for the fight Ngannou is used to having to deal with fighters coming in from all different angles and being able to catch them coming in and that's what exactly what he did from the knockdown Ngannou was I mean Fury was moving away and Ngannou managed to catch him when he was moving away and that's credit to him and his accuracy from them kind of positions and that's something which comes from UFC and the fact that he was always responding to Fury with any punch that was getting to that he was getting taken I definitely kind of underestimated his ability to be able to take a punch and credit to him to be able to do that I'm sure Fury underestimated him as well and this definitely wasn't a good night for Fury if I'm being completely honest brutally honest I don't think Fury's on the best run as of recent obviously He's been winning his fights, but if you go back to what you go back to Wilder fight, the third Wilder fight, the Otto Wallen fight, Dillian White fight, Derek Chisora fight, he's been starting to stand and trade a bit more and that's just not been working. That's just not what was working so well in the earlier fights for him early on in his career and he's not been looking amazing the way that he is standing and trading and he's seemingly on a bit of a decline at the moment sure he could he's a world-class fighter and he could definitely turn that around but he is on a decline at the moment and people have to admit that and you just have to not just look at the Ngannou performance but look at all the performances as of recent like I mentioned and they've not been overly impressive but do I think that you'll fight Usyk in December no chance I really highly doubt it from what I was seeing or from what I was hearing Fury was talking about going into a camp next week for Usyk and that's and then well before the fight he was saying that and then after the fight and the post fight interview he was saying that he wants to have a little bit of time out and that you're not going to see him until after Christmas and all of that so there's no chance that it's going to happen in December I don't think it will however much Usyk wants that to happen and it realistically should happen it's been too long now that we've been waiting for that but I, I mean it could happen in February I don't even know if it's going to happen at this point. I'd really just like to see if it's not going to happen by... If it doesn't happen by March, then I feel like the WBC have to step in and take charge of it and say to Fury that it has to. Do I think they will? No chance because it's just, it's just not going to happen. But it's kind of sad to see to an extent. Usyk now, he's in a bit more of a driving seat coming off of that fight and maybe... But he doesn't even want more money, to be completely honest, from the sounds of it. So, you know, I suppose it doesn't really matter who's maybe a side going into this one. Um, but it, it's a fight that has to happen. Where do I think Ngannou could go? Uh, there's been talks. Eddie Hearn's now open for him to fight Joshua. That could be a good fight. I think Malik Scott's talking about him possibly fighting a Wilder. And <laughs> so credit to him. I mean, when he first left the UFC, nobody really thought it would be a good decision. Nobody really thought it was a good idea and thought that he wouldn't be able to get any opportunities in big fights now he's gone and had a, made a load of money from this fight and now he's got loads of doors opening for him and so it'd be interesting to see 
with this PFL contract that he also has if he even is going to go to there because necessarily he doesn't have to do that anymore and he kind of seemingly had that as a bit of a backup if he got brutally stopped versus Fury but now he didn't really need that as a backup and uh, so yeah I'm sure big things going to be in the future for him and like I've mentioned credit to him uh, moving on Juni won via unanimous decision versus Tabiti to become WBA International Heavyweight Champion. Foster won via TK around 12 versus Hernandez to remain WBC World Super Featherweight Champion. That was a very good fight as well. More questionable scorecards from the looks of things though as well. From what I've seen, I might be incorrect, but from what I've seen, they were very heavily in the favour of Hernandez, which, you'd ex- which you kind of expect at this point, but it's not really good to see these scorecards the way that they are just really biased into one fighter at the moment and in the past few weeks the past few months it's been the case and it's quite sad to see um i mean the past few years it's really been the case but it seems to be more and more frequent um but the fight in general you got to give credit to foster that was a very gutsy performance later on as well and it looked similar to the kind of wood warrington fight Warrington was coming in and being the aggressor and getting his head in places and being on the front foot and being in close and landing the bigger punches and same with Hernandez he was doing that and there was some really good rounds so 11th round was a great round where I mean Foster like Wood did he caught him with a shot and it stumbled him it hurt him uh, Foster couldn't get him out in that round but Hernandez was really then able to then flip the momentum again and then even in that round still be able to have good points and there was definitely there's definitely a chance for a rematch for this fight it was a great fight end-to-end kind of stuff um and credit to foster to be able to get the stoppage if he didn't he would have lost um so foster did very well he showed a gutsy heartsy performance took some big shots i didn't mind how he was on the back foot for a lot of it but when he did manage to get Hernandez hurt he did flip the momentum and then pushed Hernandez back when necessary and that was a good game plan and it was good to see him not just going into the center of the ring and just trading the whole time um, but great fight uh, moving on now to the MMA news where it's not too much this week uh, but Paul has accepted a rematch of Diaz in MMA McKee and Luxton have joined Happy Punch Jones vs Miocic is off and Pavlovic vs Aspinall will fight to November 11th uh, so Pavlovich uh, and Aspinall for the interim heavyweight title in the co-main event of uh, that card with Prohaska Pereira headlining it uh, because Jones Miocic is off. With Jones being out for now eight months, from, uh, from what I've heard, it's sad to see. It means there's definitely going to be a hold up in the heavyweight division. Do I think Miocic will fight anybody else in the heavyweight division? No, because he doesn't want to risk losing and then losing out on making more money in the fight versus Jones which is fair enough and uh, I believe if Jones Miocic never happens then Miocic is probably going to retire without fighting anybody else again because like I mentioned he doesn't really have any motivation to fight anybody else from the seams of it Jones out for eight months now he's definitely going to hold up the division it means that he's not going to be able to fight any he's not going to be able to fight Miocic and then possibly defend his belt which I don't even know if he would have done anyway but he's going to hold the division again and keep him out for again a long time he was coming back out from a long time when he fought Garn obviously he's still doing amazing but he's now going to be out for even more time now it's just it's just sad to see him not fighting regularly and obviously he can't really do too much about the injury um, but good to see Pavlovich versus Aspinall great fight I'm sure it's going to be a great fight and it's going to make for a good interim champion whoever wins that um there's not really too many more big fights in the division i suppose aspinall could possibly fight garn if he beats pavlovich or pavlovich could fight garn but other than that there's not really many other big fights in the heavyweight division at the moment so there is a bit of a hold up in the division at the moment uh, which is kind of sad to see but either way that is it for today's video hope you did enjoy like if you didn't like this subscribe if you're new and thanks for watching